Joyce was. Okay, uh, let me bring the meeting of the Finance Committee to order. Uh, the first order of business is the minutes. Uh, I have a couple of questions. On the water bodies, is Spence's as 4K to 4.5K? Is that? That should be 40 and 45. Okay. And the vote should be 40. Finance committee people should always know where the decimal point goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and under our second water meters, one, two, three, four, five down, where it says owner's request, I would just recommend owner's request and expense. If I remember correctly, uh, the installation would be at the owner's expense. Yeah. And the meter. Let's see. Yeah, the second water installable would be at the owner's expense. Okay. And then the only other thing is under budget fire, third line down, the captain would not would not only administer EPS. Isn't that is that right? Uh, isn't it emergency EMS. medical? EMS. 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 Thank you. Okay, are there any other corrections? Worry about renovation. I'm down with my toes. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, uh, moved and seconded uh, that the minutes be accepted as corrected. Any other discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, now the Okay, the uh, town manager has requested, uh, voted that the town expenditures in excess of appropriation for fiscal year beginning July 1, 2013 for the removal of the ice in the additional amount of $500,000, parentheses, 1 million total, be in hereby as approved in accordance with section 31D of chapter 44 of the general laws. Uh, so right now, the, the, the the budget plus the 500,000 are gone, uh, and they just accepted shipment of another 200,000 in, uh, in um, salt and sand. So uh, I'm hoping this will be it because Monday I took down my Christmas wreath and, and threw it away. So maybe that will symbolically end this horrible winter. I did that two weeks ago. That's right? Yeah. Did you do that too? I'm, I'm sorry. I should have. You're right. <laughs> okay, so uh, discussion? Charlie? Yes. Would you uh, refresh uh, my mind, please, if not others, on, the, um, on how we handle these uh, excess uh, water, uh, snow and ice budgets in the following fiscal year? Well, the. Uh, Basically, as you know, the, the only budget that can legally be uh, overexpended is the snow and ice budget and can be overexpended with the approval of the Finance Committee. Uh, what happens then is this, in effect, is raised next year in fiscal 15. So on the tax recap sheet, there's a line item, snow and ice deficits, and that money goes directly there. Um, now, in planning the budget, the manager had included $500,000 of uh, snow and ice deficit. So he sort of covered the first part. He hasn't covered the second, this additional 500. So uh, once, um, so we give him the authority to go ahead and, and take care of this. Once, say, we get into April and we know exactly what the snow and ice is, then we could let it roll to the next fiscal year and uh, uh, and that we'll have to reduce the amount we put in the fiscal stability fund to, to balance it out. Or what we can do is cover that out of the reserve fund uh, in June, because by then we'll know it is. And right now we have about $650,000 or so. 
Uh, so it seems to me we could just cover it as a reserve fund also. So we have a couple options. There, try. Is, is there any requirement um, if we have a certain increase or certain size snow and ice budget, uh, is there any requirement to budget that amount in the future? Uh, you are in order to have the ability to deficit spend the snow and ice, you have to appropriate at least the amount that we appropriated last year. <coughs> so let's say we appropriated 750 last year, uh, or in 13. This year we decided to cut it to 500. We lose our ability to deficit spend. But since you know we've always appropriated at least the prior year or more, and the last few years we've we've tried to edge that up, then we can do this. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So what are you proposing? Okay, so uh, it's the vote that I read you. Basically, we're authorizing the manager uh, to expend an additional five hundred thousand for snow and ice uh, for a total of one million over that. Um, like I said, I think they've got about 150 to 200 committed with the salt. And from now on, it just depends. You know, if we get more snow and ice. Uh, we were supposed to get some dribbles today and nothing happened. So maybe we'll walk out and maybe we won't. Dean? Well, I mean, the only, it's more common. Um, Rate one's in at this point. Um, and though we have the ability to have So I think we're at the point now where the manager really needs to, I mean, he's got focus, he's eight months in, he can figure out where the budget's are going to start to come in and make his darnest effort not to blow above the reserve fund on other things by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be our, our objective should be to pull some of this out of the reserve set of funds and we ought to put on the recap sheet. Yeah. Maybe. No, I, I think that's right. And I think, I, I, uh, I've been talking about it with Christine, that if there's any money left between you know the manager's budgets and the 3.5% he's allowed to get up. Even if it's a small amount, we throw it into snow and ice. So we just keep trying to you know, get that up uh, a little bit higher. <coughs> okay, any other questions? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second, moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Gloria, could you deliver this to the town manager? I'm sorry? Uh, they, they are next. Okay, uh, article, almost on time, article 35. To the Transportation Advisory Committee. Okay, so it's just part of the uh, committees and commissions. Okay. Okay. Okay, gentlemen, we haven't seen you for about 20 years. <laughs> Can you please explain to us <laughs> why you're here, how much you want, and what do you want it for? Right. Uh, my name is Rich Stokat. I'm the co-chairman of the Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, both of you know at STAR. Um, we have um, made a request for $35,000. Why, um, why don't you stand? Sure. 
right there, just so we make sure you're heard sure. by the whole audience. All right. Um, we have made a request uh, an appropriation of thirty-five thousand dollars to uh, cover uh, a variety of matters that the Transportation Advisory Committee uh, undertakes from time to time. The original appropriation was $25,000 back in 2001, and we are uh, almost out of those funds. Um, depending on the project that the Board of Selectmen asked, the Transportation Advisory Committee um, is really is a, is a case by case basis. So we don't really have any set specific uh, expenditures. Uh, sometimes we use them for uh, traffic studies, <coughs> doing traffic counts, things like that. Uh, we do have two members on the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee who are transportation professionals, so we've been able to leverage their, uh, their expertise and handle a lot of matters uh, through the committee and uh, saving some money, we think, over the years. Um, we are at the present time, I don't know, do you know how many projects we have at this moment? At least a dozen more. Certainly the responsibilities of the Transportation Committee have, uh, have expanded like most other committees in town. Uh, over the years, and that's the request. That's the reason for the request uh, for the 35,000. We are undertaking bigger projects, uh, among them uh, the Lake Street study, the bike path, uh, the Jason Street neighborhood. We're uh, conducting a study now. Uh, we're soon going to be undertaking uh, Paul Revere Road and Appleton Street. So there are uh, some significant projects that uh, the Board of Selectmen has uh, charged the Transportation Committee uh, to review and advise on. So. Um, Again, the expenditures cannot be, can't really quantify what they're needed for. It, it really depends on the project and what sort of uh, professionals we may need or other assistance we might need for the project. Are there any questions? Paul? So how long ago was it that you were allocated 25,000? 2001. How many did you go in 2001? And say in the last three years, how much have you spent? $4,000. Um, would it make sense to, instead of doing the whole 35000 we gave you some amount and instead from year to year we look at what you need instead of giving you 12 <coughs> years or 13 years or whatever. I, I've talked to the controller about that and unfortunately our expenditures are, you know, there's years we don't spend anything. You give us a budget. You know, and it might, we might not use it. But there's another year where we'll be, you know, six or seven thousand dollars given the project that we're working on. So it's very, quite variable. Over the last 13 years or whatever it is, what, what year was the biggest expenditure? How much was it? I know we spent seven thousand dollars one year, maybe eight years ago. Seven, seven thousand? Seven thousand, sorry. And then we sort of, after that, sort of squeezed down and we were very, very, very quiet. So we didn't, uh, I think we've used the water, the money very effectively. I mean, you get the leverage of volunteers doing this. <coughs> and uh, as Rich said, they know how to without paying the overhead of, of the design consultant work. They know how to go to the company direct to get, get counts or to hire somebody to do a synchro study. Yeah. I, I, have, I have no question that you right. spend the money very wisely and that it's a good investment. And I'm just trying to think of ways that, that we might have better visibility into the number. And, and one thing I would propose is we, we do 10,000 this year and see how much you spend and bring it up, the difference up to 10,000 and, and essentially each year bring you up to a $10,000 rolling uh, reserve, essentially. Well, uh, in terms of accountability, we have a town account and you can go any, at any time and look at the expenditures on that account and it's very visible. It's managed by Laura Weir in the planning department. John? So, I have to preface this by saying that I'm on a small crusade. And my crusade is to try to have fewer of these reserves here, there, everywhere in the town. There are pots of money everywhere. People essentially creating reserves. 
And the, the alternative to that is that when you get into a bind, you come to this committee and we give you extra money from the uh, reserve fund, which is what it's for, it's for unanticipated instances. So uh, I, I would support what Paul has said and reinforce what he said as well because we think you're a wonderful committee. I, mean, I think I might speak for everybody. I think, all, I think you do a great job. So uh, this is by no means anything but trying on my part anyway to, to, to keep the reserves, reserve pots <coughs> everywhere smaller than we have them. So I would, I would uh, suggest that if you think you guys can live with it, uh, at least I would feel more comfortable with something like $10,000. And, and if, you, if you get into trouble, please come here and tell us right away. Just in, in line with that, for example, of your, of your projects that you have on the line, do you have a sense of how much the biggest project would cost? Uh, I think we're, we're going to be starting the Paul Revere Appleton project, you know, I think, any day now at this point. And what that involves, we don't know because we have really have not started uh, an assessment of what the entire area is and what we're going to have to consider. Uh, projects like that, um, Lake Street Corridor, the bike path, things like that, it's very difficult for us to anticipate ahead of time what we might need until we've done an assessment. Uh, sometimes that involves getting some design studies or traffic engineers, traffic council, things like that. So it is a little difficult for us to predict ahead of time uh, what any one or more projects are going to cost. And part of the uh, um, Part of the issue is that, uh, as I mentioned before, every project is different. Some of them, as Ed indicated, really have not required an expenditure of much money at all. We're noticing that the projects that we're being charged with are uh, a little bit more expansive than they have been in the past. So I think in that, in that regard, we certainly anticipate more expenses, but how we get to find those at a time, I, I don't know that we can do that just yet. One specific example, we've been working on basement, mill, and, and mass intersection. The signal there and the signal and all that. And I think, uh, I think the expenditures there were a little over 5,000 or so. And uh, I think we probably spent six or 700 of that in 2013. And the rest of it will be in 2014. And uh, how much will one cost? How much money do you have? What's your balance now? A little over five hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, Dean? Um, I don't know if this is really a question for you, but how are you rolling the money over? How are you rolling the money over? I, I guess what I'm lost by is, and maybe this is just different from the last time we voted it and now, but this article, every time when we put it in, at least since I've been on the finance committee, appropriates to committees to be raised by the general fund under general tax. So if you don't spend it by the end of the year, the money goes back into the general fund. How are you guys keeping it out of? I, I asked Ruth that, <coughs> whether she had any problem with this, because I knew this was coming up, and she apparently didn't. That Because it's in a one article, um, and, and the way this is done, they can, they can roll the money. We, we, we have a specific account that was set up in 2001 and funded. And you just take it out of that account. Because, you know, to the point I made earlier, the fluctuations are really quite huge. Okay. Carol? Um, I'm confused as to why we don't see that at all in the planning budget. Does the planning budget have money aside from what we're seeing in their budget that we have right here in front of us? If you look at the planning budget's numbers and expenses, <coughs> it doesn't look like it accounts for that type of money anywhere. But this is not part of the planning budget. This was voted by town meeting for the Transportation Advisory Committee, specifically. So then, we, so that the, I guess my question is, why don't we see it anywhere? Because we see lots of small amounts of the miscellaneous warrant article. If you looked at the 2001 assignment, you would see it. Okay. I assume. Yeah, and it just it just gets rolled rolled over with the balances. It's a very low maintenance kind of thing. 
Okay, are there any other questions? It, it seems to me that um, the highest amount that they spent in, in a single year was $7,000, that was 2004. That, uh, you know, the range of projects probably up somewhat um, just because of inflation since that time, that was uh, 10 years ago. So I, from while I agree with uh, Paul's idea of partitioning this request over a year, I think we ought to bump it up over the $10,000. Yeah. I would I would recommend fifteen thousand. John, how do you guys feel about fifteen thousand? Are we are we will we be hampering you? Do, you? do you think are we making sense to you or not? I don't think we're going to spend fifteen thousand dollars in two thousand and fourteen. Would be my guess. Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Fiscal year. Fiscal year. Sorry. But I think the only thing it will mean is we'll come to meet you more often. We'll create more. We're delighted to see you. <laughs> it will create more of our energies into managing the financial flow versus working on projects. And, and uh, like has been said, the finance committee is always available for the reserve fund. Uh, 24-7-365, so, uh, if, if that's the case. I'll make note of that. Okay. <laughs> Usually my vice chairman handle that. Uh, Alan. This is a, a comment, a suggestion. Because this will come up in front of town meeting this year, I, I would suggest it would be a very good opportunity to do a short slideshow of what TAC has done since 2001. <coughs> I think people will be, you know, the top 10 projects that have done. What, what they've gotten for that money? Well, we initiated the mass corridor in the early 2000s. That's a major problem. Don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you all. Appreciate you coming. Okay, 8 o'clock, right on the button. Uh, electronic voting, Article 55. Ah, there it is. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, gentlemen, can you introduce yourself and uh, why you're here and what you're looking for? John Leon, the moderator for the Eric Helmut, the chairman of the East Concord Senate Committee. <laughs> last year, you gave us $10,000 to rent a system for one year. You put it up and did it. You got a Couple, two competitive bids. We went with one system, option technology, and OTI, who is going to do all all the meetings we have, no matter how many is four to ten thousand this year. So we're going to all have a quicker electronic handset, electronic voting handset. Sorry. Um, and they're going to give us a body to run the thing and all the equipment, the computer equipment, the program we needed to operate the whole system this year. We're coming back in here. Um, under the Warren article, to purchase or to rent the system again if town meeting decides it likes it. As you probably all know, I'm not one for resolutions, but I actually put a resolution on myself this year, strictly asking town meeting to have a little debate to see if they like using the system, and if so, the next article is to fund it. So we're obviously here asking you guys for money whether or not we buy it or rent the system, it's, I guess, up to you folks eventually. Um, <coughs> whether or not it gets funded in one year or over five years of the capital expenditure, that's beyond Eric and I. So that's why we're here. Um, Eric got some numbers on how much it costs for the five, that $10,000 this year. We don't know if that will be every year to rent maybe more. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, the committee in its preliminary investigation last year reported to annual town meeting in 2013, investigated the costs as part of, of our whole uh, work and determined at that time that a typical system at the, at the higher end that we might want to purchase would cost about $29,000. Um, 
and that renting it would be in the neighborhood of what it turned out to be around 10,000. The 10,000 we're getting this year from the vendor that we chose, they said is a discount, a demonstration discount, because they would like to earn our business in future years. Our options moving forward, if town meeting decides it likes to use this kind of system for voting, our options would be to continue to rent equipment with a vendor support person um, each year. The town of Framingham does choose to do that because that's better for them. Or the town could decide to buy the hardware and the software and have town personnel operate the system. So that's not really a decision that we're really asking for now. I think what's really on the table is what recommended figure to put, um, what figure to put into that warrant article if town meeting decides it wants to fund a future use of the technology. Um, I spoke with the town manager earlier this week. Um, he relayed to me that he had put, the town manager's budget had a provisional sum of $20,000 under this warrant article. <coughs> and I gave him the updated figure from our, from our research. And he's very comfortable with my asking you on his behalf to uh, increase that amount to $30,000. And he said that if you agree with that, you would adjust his budget accordingly. That would be purchased. That would, that, would, that would allow the option of a purchase um, at, at the pricing investigation that we did last year. So whether or not we end up leasing or buying, I think it will eventually be a decision of the manager and the IT department and I guess the capital planning. Um, with buying it, we own it, we have to provide our own bodies. Dave Good thinks he can put a body in there to run the system for about a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a year and have a dedicated employee doing it. So that would be an expense he would have to pick. Be our employee or theirs? If we buy it's our employee. Dave Good will give us an employee to run it. And that would cost about fifteen. Yeah, yeah. So that would be one of the um, included items <coughs> we purchase. Uh, if we purchase we're obviously responsible for our keep and maintenance, any um, um, upgrades you know, we all have software upgrades every year and it costs us money. I'm sure they're going to do that to us too. If we lease it, they come in, put everything here, and take all away. Um, and it's all on the one nickel. But that's not a decision that we obviously can make tonight or should make tonight because we haven't put anything up there. We, and we haven't tried it. We haven't even tried to take the light. I think your advice was well taken that the committee went back after this hearing last year and, and really recommended the town meeting that let's, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's yeah. do a supported rental to see how, how it works for everybody. That's what we're doing this spring. Charlie and Bill? So, um, you know, John, what did you say the least cost was for this year? The body? This year is $10,000 for as long as any meetings we have. This year? For this year. For 2015? We don't know. We don't. Oh, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Um, we told them that our meetings usually run about and not eight to 10 meetings, but last year was an odd meeting, it was six. Um, this year, we don't know how many will be. It's the same 52 articles as last year, so maybe we'll knock on wood, get it down to six again. We'll see. I think it's fair to say that if we decided to <coughs> use the technology another year, and if we decided to lease or rent rather than buy, the cost would very likely be substantially higher than 10,000. I don't know how much higher, I guess maybe 12 or 15. Because they are giving us an unspecified discount that is consistent with the cost I know from other towns that, that do rent the system. How much do you know how much rent you can rent? I don't. Well, yeah. Not my not my guess. Yeah. 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 Okay, I think that would be important to Bill, so I'm just having a little bit of difficulty uh, not seeing a cost study going out X number of years that we're going to vote on a certain amount of money, and we're not really sure whether it's going to be on a lease basis or an own basis. Um, is there perhaps a step in between voting on uh, an allocation for you and actually seeing uh, a study that shows how each appropriation would work, whether it's a lease or whether it's a purchase? Because well, those things can change, obviously. Yes, the, uh, Maintenance the, the can lease, change. The yeah. purchase, you know, it would be a fixed cost and hopefully the thing lasts for it has a year. Yeah. Right. Um, the lease, it's variable. Every year they would come back with a little more money. Um, so to give you that without, to give you that study right now without an actual 
hard to fix the lease that's not a teaser. This is probably a teaser rate. And we also haven't put up proposals, the request for proposals for that. So I think unless we had a very operationalized, we got ahead of ourselves, got ahead of town meeting, really, uh, because we still don't know what the desire is for the future. So I think that you know we would have to bid that out and, and see what the real costs would be and then do that analysis. And the way I think we've thought about it is um, if we have enough money, if town meeting goes enough money to cover our to cover its options, because this is ultimately for town meeting's decision, especially about the technology, um, you know, then then we would have a lot of work to do. Uh, and I think with this body having a significant role uh, in helping us in helping the town manager make that decision about how to spend that money. I mean, I mean, I think the logical might be to appropriate $30,000 to the town manager to be extended in consultation with the capital budget committee and the IT, and then let them go out to bid. And, and then in the future, it's a capital budget item. Um, the town meeting is not deciding whether to lease a purchase or they should be. They're sort of up or down. We don't really want to make that decision. We think that's someone of our no, I understand. I'm just having a hard time coming up with a, a number in my head uh, because we have two two ways that this could, could ultimately go. One that right. well, yeah. ultimately right. can go. Okay. Anybody else? Peter and Charlie. Uh, from your visits to other towns, do you have any sense of how, how much the annual maintenance of, on the equipment we owned it would be? Very small. Yeah, very small. Basically, at this point, bad. It's not going bad.
is a transceiver unit, the radio unit that beams the both voting data back and forth in the handsets. Now we're going to anticipate we put it, this goes up on a big screen like at the state house, yes. so everybody can yep. check it and make sure. It's going to roll through three precincts at a time, seven screens. Um, each screen will be there for 20 seconds. I'm doing the right yeah. Thing. So you're talking $30,000, you're talking six years, that's $5,000 a year plus 1500 So you're talking 7000 to 15000 depending on what method yeah. is chosen for the annualized purchase. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'd be very happy to, uh, to ask our committee to work out some more detailed uh, projections along those lines, I think, before, before time meeting uh, and for this group if you want. Okay. Yeah, that's very reasonable. reasonable. I think that would be very helpful. Uh, if you could um, work that up within the next week or so, week and a half. Week, week four. We yeah, we meet on uh, first Tuesday in March. Yeah. So if you could get that back to us by the tenth or twelfth. Yeah, twelfth. Yeah, just email it to Gloria and she'll she'll forward it to all of us. Okay. And just uh, so people have a sense of it. Do we, do we do 12 some out of town in the 10? Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. If any questions come up, feel free to yeah. email Eric or I, and, and we'll address those when we come back. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Thank Take care. <laughs> Let's go back to 35 then, since. Okay, the Transportation Advisory Committee, 2001, appropriated 25,000, so it's taken 13 years to work their way through it. I think they said they had a balance of 5,000. Yeah, yeah. Um, and their request is for 35. So we've had some discussion on amounts. Uh, I think I think they said I thought they said the balance was five hundred, didn't they? No, five thousand. Five thousand. Five thousand. Um, so one person made a suggestion of ten, another said fifteen. Uh, what's the will of the committee? I move fifteen. I move fifteen. Okay, so moved and seconded Second. uh, for fifteen thousand. Any further discussion or any discussion? Okay, so a motion's been made and seconded for $15,000. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, $15,000. I'm going to abstain from the vote because I used to be a member of an associate member of the committee. Okay, oh, $15,000. This is on. Two, and, and this will be as part of Article 35. Appropriations of committees. Right, and it'll just be a list and and that will be there. That's why I was looking for a separate article on that. So, um, okay, well, how about, you know, it's, it's almost, I wish they didn't put the resolution in because we could do one vote of this thing instead of two, but um, so I'm not even sure. It's almost the resolution should just come from the town meeting. You know, somebody gets up and move a motion, and I'm not sure we, we or the selectmen should be making a recommendation, uh, but we'll figure that out. Um, I'm sorry? Yeah, electronic voting. There's two articles. 54 is, a re is simply a resolution to determine the sense of the town meeting, whether they should, we should be doing this. So obviously, if 54 is defeated, then 55 will just I'll ch I'll make a motion of no action. And uh, I'll probably add whatever money to the 56. I'll modify that to be up. Uh, so 55, uh, it, it, it sounds like, and, and granted, we don't have uh, specific numbers, except for the uh, $29,000 that they have to purchase the system, 
uh, and about $1,500 from IT to run it. Um, so they'll need approximately $30,000. The details will be done after you know, they go out to bid and determine whether they want to lease it or purchase it or all that kind of stuff. But I would think we would need to, to appropriate the amount of money the most they would need and then let everybody determine how they want to do it. Um, Charlie? Well, this whole discussion has had an implied assumption here that this thing has value. And um, when, when uh, Eric presented this to the Finance Committee in town meeting, I don't remember whether it was last year or the year before, there were two, uh, I just remember two, uh, um, maybe three points where he suggested that the, the value was residing in this system. One was something called uh, transparency, so people could know immediately how everybody was voting, and that this would have some uh, salutary effect on the town meeting. Uh, the second was um, speed, that it would make things go faster. But that would only have an effect on a certain, you know, we don't have that many standing votes. Um, Or, or votes where the we spend a lot of time counting what the votes are. I, I forgot what the third point was. I thought I had it, but I think w one at least is to stop people from leaving it to break. Yeah, I don't know how much of an issue that was. But so um, the, you know, the question is, so we so the I think I don't think the finance committee should simply be making a recommendation now to allocate a certain amount of money for something whose value we can, can't make any judgment on. In, because this is, it's not just, you know, it's, it's gonna be something uh, like, depending upon how, how we go about it, it's gonna be maybe 15,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 a year or something like that. I, I don't know how, what, really where these costs are gonna wind up for, for the whole system on an ongoing, basis, including maintenance and including the person to, to manage it. So if, you know, if, if there's a dramatic improvement in town meeting as a result of testing this, then we might have a recommendation in one direction. But if there's not, you know, we might, I, I think we might not want to make a recommendation to support any amount of money for this. I mean, certainly it's a, it's a decision that town meeting can make, but if we're being asked to recommend something, we should have valid reasons to recommend it. And, and right now, uh, we don't have any knowledge about it. So I don't think we can recommend it. At least that's my opinion. Alan, or sorry, Bill and then Alan. So I'm thinking maybe the recommendation uh, would be kind of putting the car before the horse, but to either lease it for the town meeting that's coming up in April, so that everybody can see how it works, and then we'll have a base, there'll be a basis for making a decision where we want to own this or rent it, or lease it, and uh, test it out. Well, that's, that's they, they have it on order. We will be using it at town meeting, this, okay. this town meeting. But my point is, the finance committee's recommendation should be made after it's being after used for four weeks, after. not today. After that meeting. Yeah. Uh, Alan or Peter? Well, I agree. I, I sat in on the meetings last year as a lot of voting. On voting, but I sat in other meetings, and it really did boil down to the perceived benefit was one of transparency and accountability. Get, yeah, you know, it essentially allows every vote to be a roll call, and whether or not that's good or bad really is a decision for town meeting. It, it, will that impact the actual votes? Will it impact the people who want to run for town meeting if they're being held accountable for not only the way they vote, but how often they show up and whether they stay? <laughs> after the break, et cetera, et cetera. So it's about accountability and transparency. But I totally agree that it's not, I, I mean, I don't believe that it's the role of FinCon to decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. That's the role of town meeting to do. <coughs> but from mechanics, I know in, in, the, in the flurry of, of balancing the budget at the end of the day, it's easier to say, we're not gonna spend that and just put it in the stabilization fund than to Take it out. I, I, I think it'd be better for us to appropriate some amount of money, and then if 
54 goes down, then we just put them in stabilization. And as Al said, sort of, you know, the sequence is, do the resolution, decide if town meeting wants it. If town meeting doesn't want to do it, then we immediately change the stabilization fund article, amend that to put it back in. So it's really, you know, mechanics on the floor of town meeting. I think we should appropriate as if town meeting is going to want to do it next year and then back off at the last minute if they don't, rather than the other way around. But I disagree with you on one thing, Al. If we're going to put the money in the, in the budget, we have to make a recommendation one way or the other. And, and so we may have... I think we can make clear, and it's very clear in the comment, right. that it's contingent on the will of town meeting. I'm still disagreeing with you that you're, you're implying that the finance committee doesn't have any any dog in the hunt, and we do. If those well, issues, then, then, those then, issues yes. of, of transparency and accountability and speed or efficiency or whatever, are are certainly judgmental characteristics that we should exercise with respect to whether this money should be spent or not. Well, I, I, then, then we, we can agree to disagree on that. I believe that the town meeting members among us can express their opinion as town meeting members, but my feeling is well, the finance committee should. Every, everybody in town that wants to spend money yeah. expresses its opinion that it's a good thing to spend the money, and we have an independent opinion of it. That's our job. Peter? Okay. I was, I was going to say that this, this issue could be clarified as a comment perhaps on both articles. Well, I, yeah. I, I think the comment has to explain it, uh, that one's contingent on the other. Paul? Um, to further what Charlie said is, we might come away from trying it out in town meeting and think it's a good thing, but we then might say it's a good thing, but we don't think it's worth this much money. That's right. We think it would be worth you know, half that much, but not that much. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that... Well, but you can't do it for half that well, much. Well, for we don't know. I mean, right now, we don't, <laughs> we don't know the money thing. And, and they, I, I can tell you, they've done enough homework to know pretty closely what it's going to cost. Uh, so it's not going to be the way. But, but I, I personally, until I try it out, won't, um, won't have a good idea as to whether I think it's worth whatever that amount of money um, and, and one other note on, on your comment about um, uh, you know, everybody's a roll call vote. I believe the moderator said last year that he may very well not use it for every vote. He may very well, you know, do voice votes for lots of things. And, uh, and only yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's pretty likely that more votes will really be an effect roll call votes. Many more than perhaps. Not, not, not All the routine stuff, you know, we'll stuff. go through, but uh, there will be many more. I, I do want my vote recorded on the measure of wood and bark. But. <laughs> <laughs> John? So, so, are you recommending no action on 55 and then a substitute motion if we decide, you know, along the way that it's a good idea? In other words, if we want to put the thing in place. In well, Alan has Alan's point is that to balance the budget and have a budget book uh, that makes sense, then there needs to be a number in there, and it either has to be zero or something. Yeah. And if it's zero, it says we're recommending against it. And but it, but my concern is if it's something, it implies we're recommending for it. And and I don't think we have any basis to do either of those right now. In in some sense, the the motion that they're putting in front of finance committee and, and town meeting is more appropriate in the last week of town meeting than now. So um, I would say having a budgetary number in there, but unless the finance committee affirmatively votes to support this, it should be stated that it's a, it's a, uh, uh, a bookmark or something like that. But what, what, is, what is your suggestion as a the finance committee's recommendation on Article 55? No action? What's 55? 55 is the, is the money item. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think uh, you, you could make a positive uh, vote of favorable action for, say, $30,000, and then underneath it, contingent upon favorable action under 54. I mean, obviously, 55 is contingent on 54. <coughs> and if they vote against it, it's a no action. Um, but to a certain degree, I think this is town meeting's decision. Um, 
as a, you know, it would be the first time I think we've ever not done that. But I think it's town meeting's I decision. Want to make it, Every vote that's taken at town meeting is town meeting's decision. Yep. And we shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that a budgetary vote is our decision. We're making recommendations on these things, and, and this article is no different than any other. It just happens that the consumers or the users of this stuff are town meeting members. But we still have the same obligation to make an informed recommendation on this that we have on every other article. Okay. Um, when Peter, Paul, and Dean, when? So, I mean, I think, I think what Charlie was saying is that we can't make an informed recommendation at this point. And because of the timing issue, we, unless we have, unless we decide at that meeting before, you know, the meeting before that article comes up, to make an informed recommendation, we really can't make a recommendation. Some people are saying we shouldn't make a rec recommendation, we should leave it to a meeting to decide on its own. So I think that's the two choices, either we defer the recommendation until the day of the article, or we put the dollars in and make it clear we're not making a recommendation, we're just putting the dollars in, and, and this is the one instance in which, because we don't have the information, we are not making a recommendation. Absolutely. That's a mechanical solution that could work. So, Uh, Peter? I, I agree with what Ken just said. I, I, I'm a town meeting member. I don't know whether it's going to be worthwhile or not. There's no way I can make a recommendation. Well, you, 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 uh, you know, nothing's going to get spent without town meetings approval. So, uh, Paul? So, Going along with this, I, some kind of wording such as, we're, we are not making a recommendation at this time. After it is used in town meeting, we will um, meet again to decide a recommendation. Um, and, and, and something like we're, we're a, a recommendation of $30,000 can't, can't get the word right off. Yeah, it's a placeholder. Yeah, yeah. placeholder. Right. See? So, I, I was about to say what you're about to say. We do have to balance the budget here. So if we have to add 30000 on the fly, we create a sort of slight mechanical issue on the floor of town meeting. So would it be easier if we just, like Alan said, um, appropriate a sum of zero initially write the comment as was previously mentioned put the 30,000 into the reserve fund because it'd be easier if we just table, table the reserve fund when it came up because it's its own article yeah I, I think the place to put it is in the, the next article the fiscal stability fund I, I, I sort of arranged it that oh, way that. so you could do it uh, just to have mechanically have a motion uh, for favorable action with a comment saying this is contingent, put in zero, uh, and then uh, um, and, and then plug in the plug in whatever the dollar figure is when we get to it, and we can flip it afterwards. All right, I'll make the motion that I move that we um, zero, and then we write a comment that we'll evaluate it after it's used. So we have a motion for favorable action for zero. Yes. Uh, with a comment that a specific recommendation will be meant uh, will be made when we get to the article. Yes. When we get okay, there. Is there a second to that? Is it Article 55 or 54? That we're 55. 55. 54 is just a resolution. Just a resolution. Okay. Alan? I'd like to make a substitute motion or an amendment or something for $15,000. And my intent there is to fund one, I believe 15,000 would fund one year additional rent, a full, a full town meeting next year. And aside from the bookkeeping, and, and I want to confirm that number, but I want a number that would, we'd confidently say next year we'd do the same thing for the whole year. Part of that is, is bookkeeping, because I think it's better to show it and take it out at the last minute than to not show it and put it in at the last minute. Uh, but the other one is I'd like to have a number that's defensible that we got from the committee 
so that it's more transparent to town meeting that if you vote affirmative on 54, then you are essentially committing to spend whatever we put into the pot. It puts, it gives a, a, a more clear value judgment, I think, if the number's right there, you know, there's a hard number in front of them. When it comes down to, well, we like it, but is it really worth $15,000 to do it again next year? That becomes a, a more concrete decision. So okay, I'm going to so $15,000 potentially to be adjusted to make sure it's one year. And I guess I'm recommending, at least in the beginning, rent one year at a time, at least for another year or two before we institutionalize it with a uh, capital expense, you know, it, before we buy it. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. I thought it was 10, I'm sorry, but I thought it was 10,000. This year was 10,000, they think that's a teaser. Yeah. I, I believe 15,000 is what they would expect. It's a loss leader. But, but again, I want to confirm that, but a loss leader. But, but, but I, 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 I would want to, I, I'm using the number 15,000, what I'm really saying is, for the committee to give us a number that says, we're pretty sure we can rent this next year, one year, for this amount of money flat out. And sort of in these initial stages, ask town meeting to make the decision one year at a time. Dick? So what you're saying now is, you really rent it for two years. That this decision would be for, and yeah, not, not, not commit to a purchase yet, even after a Could have given 30,000 to the police, fire, or uh, school department, but we gave it to this voting system. I think people look like you were nuts, right? And now that's my opinion, so that might not reflect the opinion of town meeting. Um, but, I, I, th but I think that's a discussion that needs to be had in Article 54 before we, we, we appropriate money under 55. And that's why I keep going with, that's why I think the zero works, because it doesn't give an endorsement of anything. It doesn't say we try it again. It doesn't say we think it's a good idea. It just gives everybody their opportunity to talk. We get to 54, and depending how that goes, then we can move to 55. But to me, and this would be the last way I would close it, is even though I just said that, what I said about it, if the town meeting votes for it, I would absolutely support the appropriation because it's not my job, my personal opinion, to start creating roadblocks the entire way. So, you know, I think you put zero, we, have, we discuss it on 54 and we go from there. Now, what it could be is that one of the meetings, let's say, <coughs> let's say we think town meeting's gonna go six nights, probably the fifth night I'll schedule a vote here. And, and, uh, and that would encumber the people who are not town meeting members on this committee would, would follow up either on TV or in the, in the balcony because 
you know, so we, we'd hash it out and give our opinion, like Charlie says, our recommendation on whether we think it's worthwhile, and then it's up to town meeting to decide. But that, you know, I'd expect everybody here when we uh, when I schedule that. So, Alan and well, Bill. I guess I, I, I will withdraw my substitute motion and support the zero on condition that when Article 54 is discussed, we have a number in front of town meeting so they know what the implication of a yes vote is. So they have a dollar number attached to saying yes on 54. Yes. We just need to make that very clear. Yep. So maybe in the comment of 55, recommend zero, but if you vote 54, we're going to recommend X. Just so they, they have a dollar amount. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, uh, for briefly, that, the, that if you go with zero, that, that the comment section has to really be explicit, and uh, one term that I've heard uh, get around is uh, without prejudice. So that we're putting this amount in without prejudice. Yeah, we're not it's, a, it's a placeholder. A placeholder, we're not passing the judgment here or there. Okay. Uh, okay, so the motion's been made and seconded <coughs> for uh, a positive appropriation article under 55 with a zero number with the comment to read. This is explicitly uh, contingent upon 50. I'll work out the wording, the wording and then run it around, you know, run it off people. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of a positive appropriation of zero dollars with an extent with a, a good comment, uh, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. You know, if I may comment, one of the most frustrating meetings, uh, town meeting meetings that I ever had was one where uh, there was some controversial issue. I've forgotten what it was now, because it was like 10 years ago or something like that. And uh, a, a roll call vote was forced. And people who had already left the meeting, this is late in the, in the evening, were called back uh, on the telephone as the vote was progressing in order to win. You know, it was very selective when people got called. And I found that enormously frustrating. And this thing would cure that problem. That wouldn't happen again. I don't know if anybody remembers that. And I, it's vague in my memory, but it was a huge pain in the neck at the time. Very irritating. Okay, okay good. So we're yeah. Continuing saga here. Uh, okay, the next uh, article is Article 20. And what did we do with Article 54? We didn't vote on it at all? Uh, I mean, 54 is a resolution. Let's see what the selectmen are going to do. I mean, it'd be a selectman's main motion, uh, but we'll have to see what that, you know, what they go. Okay, uh, Article 20 is on tar oil products. And Pam, are you here for that? Yes, I am. Okay, uh, could you please uh, give your name? Uh, if you could come over here just to get a little bit closer to the microphone. Uh, if you could give us your name um, and uh, the purpose of this article, what it will do with the purpose. Okay, my name is Tina Saunder and I'm an Arlington resident. Um, and this is um, shown in the, the Warren article as a bylaw, but it is intended as a resolution, so um, there is no money attached to it <coughs> that I know of. Um, the resolution is to oppose tar sands derived products from coming into or through New England, um, and specifically in Arlington. Okay, um, what products do you foresee this affecting? Heating oil, um, gasoline, and fuel. How could we trace where your heating oil or? Right hand can't. Okay. Questions from the committee? Bill? You mentioned that it affects gasoline. 
retail gasoline sales, retail gasoline in, in the town of Arlington. That's correct. So one of the things that uh, occurred to me is that uh, I wonder if this could, if you thought about the possible hardship this could place on a retail service station owner. Yes. A tank truck goes out from the terminal, a mobile tank truck goes out from the terminal, with deliveries to mobile stations in Belmont, Arlington, Medford, Cambridge. Uh, somewhere along the way, someone's going to have to pay the price of uh, a different distillate. Is that not right? Um, this, this, this is something that I've proposed to be phased in the next three years, not something to take place immediately, and it would have to be a regional um, thing to be able to really enact a, a prohibition. So that's the reason why this is a resolution and not a, a law. It's a suggestion that we oppose it in, in this town and then have that uh, okay. carry through to other towns in the region. At the moment, um, the, the person driving the tanker doesn't know what's in it either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please tell me what tar sands oil is and why you have a folks to it? Sure. Tar sands um, oil is a um, thick fisherman um, product that is primarily <coughs> coming from the Alberta region of Canada, and it has extremely intense um, production that causes greenhouse gases when it's produced and also uh, destroys the boreal forest in the Alberta region, which is a major carbon sink. So this is a, a way of, of trying to um, reduce the amount of greenhouse gases in the Arlington area in the region, in the Northeast, um, in order to um, meet our climate action plan that we have in Arlington, the one that is signed by the governors of the Northeast, and uh, so on, uh, by 2020. Does that help? Yeah, well, I've heard very little of this, and not until we saw on the Attica here, why is it I don't hear any of the environmentalists or any other people like that speaking against this? And this is the first I've heard about this. Um, uh, I mean, a lot of us are speaking against it. I think you may have heard of the Keystone XL pipeline, perhaps. Yeah, I've heard that. So that pipeline goes from the Alberta tar sands down to the Gulf of, of uh, Mexico. Right now there's the Keystone um, pipeline that has just been opened. And that is delivering tar sands to refineries um, in the Gulf, and the XL would be an express to uh, double the amount of tar sands being um, processed in the US in uh, the Gulf area. And if that one goes through and several other pipelines come through, then the possibility of having the Northeast affected by um, increased <coughs> percentage of tar sands in the fuel oil and in the heating oil uh, in the region, then um, our greenhouse gas initiatives will not be able to be met. Sure. If you can't tell whether there are tar sands in the fuel or not, how do you know the fuel is going to have more impact on the atmosphere? Um, we as a consumer
Carol? So, okay. So what I think that if I add in some things, what I think you may, the proposal may be, and tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, is that there are um, goals that certain people would like Arlington and the Northeast to reach in terms of greenhouse gas, keep, keeping our numbers lower. If we are using tar sand produced oil, then the amount of greenhouse gas, <coughs> uh, car carbon dioxide we're putting into the system, the amount of gas we're putting into the system is higher because it takes more um, carbon dioxide or, or I guess greenhouse gas is the right word, um, to produce that oil to the point where we can use it within our heating system. And so if a tracking system existed, which people are suggesting for where the tar sand oil or gasoline travels to, then places like Arlington or the Northeast could determine whether or not they were using it or could vote as consumers not to use it. That's, that's correct. Okay. And so what you're asking in the resolution is that <coughs> is whether or not town meeting would vote to um, limit or to, to refuse the presence of oil or gasoline that comes through the tar sands system in, in the town park. Is that what you're saying? Um, the, the, um, at, at the moment that we would um, oppose the supply and transport of it into the New England area, yes. In, in, um, in Arlington, I, I don't know um, whether we can specifically do that right now, but I have spoken with um, Representative Sean Garvey, who is um, endorsing this resolution and um, working with him to try and come up with a fuel quality standard that would then allow um, consumers to know what percentage of, of tar sands derived oil is in that product. Are there any other questions? <coughs> did you change? Did the did you change the article to a resolution against the bylaw? I never intended it to be bylaw. But it's a bylaw in the in the thing, so that's the way it stands now. It's not a resolution. Um, I think it probably needs to be a resolution. Yeah. Um, it, it says there is any action. That's just the way it's going to work. Do you have any quantitative information on the uh, relative impact of tar sand refining versus other petroleum refining products? Uh, yes. The process, process. Yes. Um, there's, there's the well to tank um, process, and then there's the tank to wheel. And I think when you're talking about, you know, you fill up at the gas station and then you use the car, and those emissions are the tank to wheel. To get it to the tank, um, this this is uh, 17 times, uh, no, excuse me, 80 percent. Um, <coughs> well, the, um, it's, um, I think it's um, 17 percent more um, greenhouse gas from the um, well to tank and stage of the production. Do you have any quantitative estimate of the, the impact on the price of oil or gasoline that these restrictions that you're proposing would have? There are various studies. Some of them say there's absolutely no impact in, in the cost. They'll be relatively the same. Others say that once the uh, 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. or do you want to uh, get involved? No, it's no, not a financial, as an old no, 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 no financial. Uh, okay, how about uh, motion has been made and seconded for no action, which means we're involved. Uh, if, if that passes, that's our motion. If it doesn't pass, I'll take a motion whether to uh, let the selectmen handle it uh, and we'll go from there. So, everybody clear on that? No action. That's our position. Uh, if that fails, uh, then I'll take a, a motion to let the selectmen handle it and vote on that. All in favor of no action, please say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Aye. aye. Okay. All in favor of no action, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Motion to let the selectmen handle it? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Selectmen article. So hopefully you all know, you know, a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Um, budgets. Here. Planning on page uh, 73. Uh, I think on Monday you got, or maybe it was last week, you got a substitute uh, or a revised budget for uh, from the through, through, through us from the town manager, which makes a small changes. Um, if you don't have that in front of you, I'll explain it. Is that the 402953? Yes. Okay. It's 73, he said? Yeah. And well, 75 is the Okay, Peter? So going, going to the uh, salary sheet, uh, <coughs> well, first I should. In case you didn't notice, there's a, something like a 14% increase in this budget from, from last year, so I presume everybody's somewhat concerned about that. We certainly were. Um, and the, uh, I believe that the main thing here is that the town manager uh, wants to make the planning department more effective for development. And uh, there's several things that related to that and some that aren't related to it. So there's a new person in the number two position, uh, uh, Ted Fields. We <coughs> and his title now, based on our changes last year, or uh, pay plan votes last year is economic development planner. Um, he's been on board now for, I don't know, six or eight months, something like that. <coughs> um, and <coughs> he's, he was very well qualified, they say. Hence, the, uh, he started at <coughs> near the top of his uh, pay, pay grade. Um, the uh, one thing that we, we all know he's done is is uh, is uh, host a a uh, incubation seminar in this room. Uh, it was a panel discussion of people that have have done these kinds of uh, uh, shared office arrangements. Uh, there are several different ways to approach that. And he got people to come that were both 
property owners that, that, that might host such a thing and people that might like to use such a thing. Uh, it was a good discussion and since then he says uh, things are slowly moving in that direction. Uh, the only, the only ch change really here on this, well there are two changes on this that affect the bottom line. The first one is the administrative aid. The person that's had that job for a long time died recently. And they have a new person on board and the salary is established as, as a, a base salary for 2015 of 44918, which is somewhat lower than the uh, previous person was making, which is what was on the original spreadsheet. Uh, and because that salary is lower, the um, central school offset is also lower because that's half of the, of the salary. Um, yeah, so that's another change to this sheet. And um, what's that number? The offset? Yeah. 22459. Uh, and then another change is unrelated to. to to development, I guess. The conservation administrator uh, is, is, is now 0.66 uh, of a full-time job instead of 0.4 something. Um, so she's got a higher salary here and of course her, her um, benefits will, she'll have benefits now that she didn't before. I understand that was uh, uh, lobbied for by the chair of the Conservation Commission. Why would she not have benefits before? She would have qualified if she was at a point six. If she was at a point four. She would be. Yeah, it's eighteen point seven. Oh, I take it. I take it back. Then she had benefits before, but I thought you had to have more than half. No, it's only eighteen point seven four hours. I, I checked with Karen this morning. No, oh, thanks for. Okay. What, well, what is the reason for the increased hours? More work. They expect to be very busy. And one other change, the third change is, and I heard the last change, is that the offset from, from the uh, fees fund, conservation uh, fund, is reduced from $5,000 to $3,000 because they don't have because that's essentially all they have in that fund right now. And uh, um, the deputy town manager says we can't budget what we expect to get, only what we actually have. <coughs> so that, that may be uh, more attractive next year. <coughs> Other thing I want to say something about is the line 5353 and expenses. Okay, actually, can I do one other thing for requests? Um, sure. One of the, one of my meetings with um, Karen this morning. I mean, it's on longevity. A number of the department heads, their longevity is incorrect, and so it's one of the things I wanted to do tonight. Um, since we're on it, Kowalski is one of them. So for longevity, instead of reading. I thought it was a straight one, percent. 1156? It, yeah, instead of 1156, it should be 1184. It should be 11485. One, one, 1185. One, yeah, it's been corrected on this sheet. Oh, it's fixed on the new Okay, that's great. Okay, sorry. Then the new sheet's correct. I, I didn't pick that up. Thank you. <coughs> what what are they what were they doing wrong? Um, they, they did something wrong in the calculation. So IT, HR, planning and development, inspectional services, HHS administration, and DPSW administrator are all incorrect. So for department heads, we'll get to that when you're done. I'll just make sure everybody has them updated. 
So do you think that's straightened out with uh, the deputy town manager? Yes. Exactly. This, yeah, so he I guess he it is because he did, he did this calculation. This is part of his redo here. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, he sent out emails to all of these department heads February 6th, and then he gave this to me this morning. Okay. Thank you. So going back to the expenses, the last line here is a new line, uh, $8,585. Um, <clears throat> this is based on a recommendation that, that uh, Mr. Fields made to the town manager, department head, um, to buy three pieces of combination software and database. The first one uh, provides details on Arlington's economy. The second one uh, gives information about vacancies in, in Arlington uh, properties. And the third one um, uh, allows, allows him to estimate the uh, impact of various government pro programs and uh, business changes. Uh, all these things <coughs> he could do himself, but it <coughs> you can save him. You can save a lot of of uh, time and effort, assuming these products work as it's advertised. I think um, by using the products. Um, <coughs> so is this is a one shot. I I, I, I doubt it. I, well, maybe to start with, but I'm sure there's a rental on it. Um, the uh, the savings are in the uh, in order of the ten thousand dollars, five to ten thousand dollars, in his estimates. Um, savings from what? Of uh, what he would otherwise have to pay to do the to do the work to hands on, which he has been starting to do. I recommend the uh, planning total of 402953. <coughs> Did you break down anything in addition to the conservation administrator? I mean, this used to be done by a commission. And, uh, you know, a part-time person who's moved into the plan and stayed so she, the person would have some uh, supervision, but, you know, we're up to a two-thirds person, about 44,000 now. And considering the amount of conservation land we have in the town, did you give you an example of what the additional work would be? No, I didn't get any details on it. I could. I, I have some okay. I, I understand that Did they did you get an idea of when they're gonna do that? I understand that this is a, they're talking about right now. Peter, you can just go back and say that at least some members of the Finance Committee are concerned about when the fees are going to increase to cover some of this additional cost. Okay. Paul? Uh, 
to clarify the question of is the person, the conservation administrator, going from no benefits to benefits? Mm -hmm. It's so a work week is 37 hours. I don't know. I was. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's how many? I thought it was 35. 35 hours. Okay. And how many hours? 18.74. You can start getting benefits at eight, inch health insurance at 18.74. I always thought it was 20. If, if, if this person was working 0.46 before, mm -hmm. that's 16 hours. Okay. So they were not getting benefits. Okay. okay. And now with the 0.66. David, you have something to add? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, if, if I could. Uh, when we were in a discussion on the selectmen's budget, uh, it was explained to Peter and myself, there is such a thing as a permanent part-time position versus a part-time position. And my understanding is if you have a permanent part-time position, you are eligible for certain benefits. I don't know if that's the case if you just have a classification as a part-time position. Um, the examples that I, I will come to the top of my head is uh, the, the folks that do the uh, uh, needle reading, if you will, the parking control. I understand that they have, they are a permanent part-time position that are eligible for certain benefits. I know there's people in, in different places within the town, the town government that have permanent track time. I don't know what uh, what qualifies the hours for, to, to be a permanent part time position versus a part a part time position. But it, it, it's a classification that we have. That was in the context of uh, longevity then. Yeah, because that, yeah. that would be one of the benefits if you are permanent part time. You are it's prorated, but you are eligible. For one gentleman. Gee, I wonder if that includes us. <laughs> okay, are there any additional questions? Um, there was a controversy recently about a study that they did about the economic benefits in the theaters. I don't know if you saw that article in the, the Advocate. So that $10,000, I guess, is the other unclassified budget amount that they can just spend whatever they want every year, or do you, do you know anything about that study or where the funds came from? I didn't inquire specifically about that, but they can spend the, uh, that otherwise unclassified, you know, and that, and that is what it's for, it's for that kind for of thing. kind of studies. Thanks. Dean, I don't want to hold up any votes, but can somebody on GL code 5353 over learning the device software, can whoever would be the IT budget just shoot an email off to the IT director and ask him if that's, he knows this. That's me. So uh, so if you're asking me to ask does he know David, about it? does he know about this? Yeah, I mean, I would get concerned with these things right. because we give him $9,000 and then they show up at his door and say, hey, guess what? Town meeting wants you to implement this. Here's my money. I'm ready. Okay. So. so the manager, I know the manager bought uh, in on this. I, I hope he told the IT. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Who has the IT budget? I do. Okay. So I'll, I mean, we've already met, but I can, that's no problem. Sure yeah. Let's so touch bases with yeah. him. Make yeah, sure I can just send him an email. Yeah. 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 I'm sure he is, but it never hurts. Or really hurts. Along those lines, I, I, I guess I, one other thing I should mention. The, uh, the technical plan, the, uh, there's a job that's, Yeah, the other fields, the technical planner analyst um, is part-time here. He's also on the IT budget, and he's also on, in water and sewer. Um, he's, so that person is, is actually a full-time person. So doesn't have any direct effect on this budget. But. Yeah. Okay. okay, are there any other questions on the planning budget? So, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Okay. So moved and seconded for $402,953. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Okay. Unanimous. 226. You okay, any others, Peter? You want to do um, um, AR 
B while we're here. Next, next page. We recommend that as, as, uh, as printed. What are you doing? It's ARB zoning. The redevelopment board. Redevelopment board. I was, uh, I want to see what you feel about this. And this doesn't have anything directly to do with the, you know, the passing of this budget. But um, I can't remember if we talked about it last year. Uh, but I was thinking that it would be nice to bring all of the rental properties in the town into one budget. Uh, and, uh, and, and call it rental properties and move, you know, the redevelopment board expenses, just they're actually for the redevelopment board, move that into the planning department as a line item. Call this uh, rental properties and move everything into this budget, including uh, items that might be in public works or in parks and recreation. Uh, you got Mount Boboa, you've got the Dallin Library, you've got um, a whole bunch, you know, a few other things. And, and move them all into one budget um, so we can see, you know, th these are all the rental properties and then we can have as a sub part, you know, this is all the revenue you brought in, almost like an enterprise fund, but it really isn't. Um, and I, uh, I, I mentioned to the manager last uh, fall and it, it, um, it, it slipped to the bottom of his to-do list, but I want to make sure everybody else, whether you think this is a good idea or not. Um, I think you're going to have a hard time getting the rec department to take that revenue out of their budget and put it here, but the others, I think, are afraid I'm of sorry, which department? I th the rec department, um, in terms of their rental properties. Okay, the recreation? Yeah. Didn't you just say, well, did you uh, mention? No, you part, mentioned? part of the, uh, uh, basically public works. Okay. I thought there's, there's, I thought there's properties said. in there. I'm not sure where the Dallin Library it's here. That it was was there. Okay, the Dallin Library is here. Uh, you got Malco Boa. Um, I oh, think on okay. Hyder Street there's some property. Okay. Well, Gibbs is no longer. Okay. Gibbs we sold, right? You got apartment. Yeah. Well, that's right. Actually, it is the case. But you know, it's it's scattered in like several budgets. I'd like to just bring it all and put it in one budget, uh, uh, and uh, so we can see it, so it's more transparent. Charlie. Sure. A certain number of the town properties are managed by the town manager. Yeah. And other properties are managed by the redevelopment board in uh, urban renewal funds. Or well, I know the central school would be in that case. Right. So they have to be they have to be segregated. And having them together, uh, you know, they they are essentially a uh, an enterprise fund, a specialized enterprise fund. Yeah. And by by uh, by combination of the town bylaws and the town manager act and whatever the act is that created the redevelopment board, um, those things have to stay under the redevelopment board. So that would have to stay separate. It would still you know, be desirable to have it all in one place, even if you didn't add it up. Well, you could have it in one place. All I'm saying is we can't put it in one budget. That's all. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. it, it, I mean, I don't see any reason why you just you don't collect the information and put it in the in the finance committee report as an appendix or something like that. But um, I'm not sure we can pull it all out of the budgets. Well, we, we could if it's under the jurisdiction of the manager. Um, certainly. Oh, John? You're not including, for example, when this room gets rented for a wedding or anything like that, right? Well, those are in revolving funds right now. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't think, you know, I'm looking for, for rooms within buildings, uh, uh, but. That are rented uh, on a per permanent basis? As a yeah, on a permanent basis. Yeah, okay. You know, Malco always rented yeah. out on a permanent basis. I, yeah. I don't know about Ryder Street, but uh, that used to be with the old Parks and Recreation. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not sure who, who could, well, the Don Library's here, but uh, um, maybe there's a couple others, but. Uh, uh, I, I was going to push the manager a little bit more to pull that together next year. Okay. 
Nobody seems terribly excited about it like I did. Oh, I think that's great. I think it's I've been pushing idea. for something like that for years. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you think W has to pay the cost? Never sees the revenue. Doesn't control it, like Mount Waller. They can't. DPW doesn't rent it, but they have to carry the cost and take care yeah. of it. It can't. The, the thing is, the build, with the exception of the land or the buildings that are in the urban renewal fund, all the money from the rental of those buildings has to go into the treasury. It can't. We, years ago, we had um, we had it segregated and going back into a little revolving right. piece of but, building. But, but don't you think there should be some? The Department of Revenue said you can do it. But it wouldn't be would be creating an enterprise fund. We'd just be putting all the rental properties in one place. And, 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 and if you're thinking that um, wouldn't it be nice if the if the public works department got the money back? Not necessarily. I'm, I'm saying, wouldn't it be nice for the taxpayer to know that we're spending X amount taking care of Mount Boa, and where is the revenue? Can we? How can we see the revenue coming in from the rent of that? That would be actually uh, Michael Booten has that. Yeah. But where where can where can we see it, and where can town meeting see it? In finance. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is we, we, we create a you know rental property. All the expenses are there. The revenue goes into the general fund, but we you know we we can uh, you know set aside a little one of Alan's little boxes uh, in our FinCon report that shows the revenues. That's all. Or appendix anyway. Okay. Bring all the revenues and expenses. But for central schools, you know. Okay, great, Peter. <coughs> so. Um, Along those lines, uh, the new person in the town manager's office, he's been there about a year now, I think. Uh, his name is Bhutan. Um, one of his jobs is to get on top of the, of some of these buildings, I get maybe all the buildings that the manager's responsible for. Uh, and he also is helping out on the, uh, the ones that Gerald's just been talking about, the, uh, um, urban renewal buildings, the Central School and uh, Maple Street, and uh, the, J the uh, Jefferson Cutter House. Um, anyway, he has, he, has a, he has a spreadsheet that shows revenue and expenses and a bottom line, and, and he's gathered the, uh, um, the history together for, since 2011, so he has a five-year uh, history. He doesn't have any projections yet, but this is a uh, is uh, the first time that anybody's got this all together in an organized way, at least a partially organized way, since Alan McClellan left. Um, it shows, incidentally, that <coughs> and, and, and it, as of last fall, when he presented it to the uh, Capital Budget Committee, uh, Capital Planning Committee. Um, a, a pretty substantial profit, so to speak, excess of income over uh, expenses. Um, the uh, there is <clears throat> that includes the cost of of uh, paying on, on on borrowing, cost of money, but not the uh, no. There's no estimate in here on. Possible future costs. Um, could he, uh, is it in such a state that he could share that with us? Such as what? Well, he'll be here Monday night. Oh, great. Okay. But but what they're thinking about doing is charging the tenants a um, a, a little premium of two and a half percent. Um, that would somehow go against. Uh, be set aside for capital needs. And I didn't have, when we were discussing it, I didn't get a clear idea of how that would happen. But anyway, they're thinking about it. Um, so there's some good, good moves in this direction. Um, okay, so is the, uh, we have the Gibbs total the, the, so the gallon. You add all that together, it's, Two hundred sixty-four thousand five hundred fourteen. 
the redevelopment board gives Dallin Parmetter. There is a, there is a salary, of course, the guy that takes care of some of those buildings. Are there any questions? Nope. Okay, do I have a motion for those so four items? Second. second. Okay, moved and seconded. So that's 10,800 for the redevelopment board, 15,000 for the planter, 5,000 for the gallon, and 233,714 for the gifts. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Or could you repeat that dollar amount? Two six four five one four. Two six four. Here five one four. Five one four. Okay, Peter, since you're on a roll, any others? Uh, David, we can go back to selections, page twenty three. What page, David? Twenty three. The, um, the increases on the selections uh, um, budget is primarily salaries and wages, which, it, which includes an increase in longevity. The expenses have uh, stayed the same as last year. So they're requesting it as printed 236755 on the selections budget. how I, we got into a discussion on this permanent part-time uh, position. And uh, in the selectman's office, the principal clerk and typist uh, receives a, a longevity that's prorated, but it's because her title of her position is permanent part-time position. So does she have health insurance? Uh, she does not take right now. Okay, but she is off her too. Well, I guess it would be off her too. Not to be an old buddy, but the budget's going up 5.66 percent. They should cut elsewhere. I, I I believe that that's because of uh, the, the last year the contracts uh, and the salary increases and the step increases. Drop that down to eight thousand. That's about uh, a third. One percent, one percent, three 
Carolyn, is it, is it, do you have the uh, comptroller? Yes. Uh, is, are you recommended to expend it? Yes. Um, the way I computed it, they're under the 3.5%. Between the two? Yeah. Between the two? Between the two. I didn't. Okay. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? <laughs> did you do it long, long end, not short end? No, I, I did a combination. The total of the two budgets is 659,283? Or are you counting the 14 no, budget? No, 656,659. Right. Times three and a half, and then I subtract. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I see what you mean. Okay, so. Okay, you're right. I'm nine, sorry. 936. Yes, I so see that up. We could either cut the controller or the uh, office supplies at the selector by three hundred and fifty dollars. Why not increase the offset? Um, I was going to say I don't think the offsets right. Yeah. Down. Well, the offsets are the. So oh, I know that. I'm just trying this. The water. That's not water sewer. No. Or is it? Yeah, I, yeah it's water sewer. It is. Sewer. In, in five minutes. Probably using comptroller. So. Well, I assume the offsets were put in there for a reason. I really, you know, just you know, what's the controller? What's bigger than the controllers? Well, she's got um, a telephone expense increase, and then a, a crystal reporting is the two thousand dollar for otherwise unclassified. Um, so those are the two big things. She also has a longevity increase, which is throwing, which is increasing it. <coughs> you know, they only spent 4,200 in fiscal, the selectmen, uh, in fiscal 13. Just a suggestion, knock 350 off, so he can, 600. Right, but that's getting these two numbers up, and it's exactly But you, you get the total to both budgets is six hundred thirty-six thousand six fifty-nine. The fiscal year fourteen budgets add up to six thirty-seven two fifty-nine, right? And I get six thirty-six six fifty-nine. The two twenty-four oh sixty-seven and four twelve five ninety-two. Yeah, 636, 559. I'm granted it's not a lot of money, but 
Um, wait, are the, is the auditing and the town report under the selectmen's budgets? Yeah. So they weren't counted in your total? They were not. So that brings them under 3.5%, I bet, when you count those in. No, it causes a different problem because they want a 56% increase under election. Well, in elections, we don't count because it all depends on yeah, how I many mean, elections. I mean, the printing of the town report and the audit is sort of standard. I don't know if we could count it in. There was no increase there, so we don't know. There are lots of other budgets that have sort of standard things, too. So, so it's part of their budget right. should come to the three and a half. That gets one. Okay, is everybody satisfied that when we count those two in? Yeah. Of course, when they when those things jump by ten, you know, five thousand dollars at some point, then they're going to scream. Uh, so you know, we can't keep we can't go back and forth on how we do this. No. Okay, so uh, we're doing the selectmen's budget at two thirty six seven fifty five. Correct. Okay. Uh, we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Second. Any discussion or questions? Okay. All those in favor of 236 755, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any favorable action? Unanimous. Uh, we're going to hold off on the election salaries uh, for tonight. We've asked uh, Marie in the Selectman's office to give us a printout, uh, a breakdown on the, uh, the expenses, the salaries and expenses. She, she hadn't done this, so she had been out in, uh, for a period of time, and uh, we asked her to. Okay, now next year we have a primary in September. We've got a state election in November. We, we had. Uh, Town election and town election. The town election, state primary, and, and the, the regular state yeah. election compared to what we had last year. So yeah, I think and, and town meeting is in that budget. Too. Right. Okay, uh, how about the printing town reports?
Okay, do we have a motion on the town hall? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion or questions? For those of you who are really uh, like to beat up yourself, sometimes going through the audit is really interesting. Uh, it's a lot longer and more complex than it used to be, but uh, uh, it, it used to be interesting to download it off the web, off the uh, web page. Okay, all in favor of 55,000 for the town audit, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, the printing town reports, 3,500. Yes. Uh, favor, uh, motion? So moved. moved. Second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, any others, David? That's all I have. Okay, Peter, do you have any others? No. You want Anybody any else? Controller? Do you want to do controller? Sure. Page 41. So <coughs> salaries went up significantly because both Lewis and Fields had significant longevity increases um, part of their contracts. The telephone expenses went way up because um, there's a certain amount of built-in reserve for the old system that which seems to be breaking on a regular basis. There's an RFP out for a voiceover system um, and those are the two main reasons for that increase. Um, and then the 2000 jump in the otherwise unclassified is for crystal reporting. Um, some expenses for W.B. Mason, new versions of Munis, and there is a small contract for some database work that isn't in the IT budget, so it ended up over here, and it's database work that she'll be using. And she's an operator, huh? And she's still under budget, under the 3%. Well, this is Selectman's budget, so the whole thing has to be under 3.5%. <laughs> uh, okay, any other questions? John? I, I guess I've never paid a lot of attention to this budget before, but what is the Munis stipend? So, um, right there, one of the things when we get to the uh, human resources budget, you'll also see a $50,000 amount in there for training that's outside of the normal training budget that human resources has. And the reason is because there are very few administrators within the town of Arlington who know how to use munis. And <clears throat> so whenever they hire a new person or someone who's not really comfortable with, with munis has a question, they call Ruth Lewis. And so she's sort of available, you know, at, at any point for that. She also helps people when they need to um, adjust the way they're using Munis. She gets involved. If there's a problem with maintenance, she gets involved. And so they have, instead of adding that job description into her um, job, they've added in this um, Munis stipend for the last few years. So that's what that 5,000 is. And it does go towards her retirement. What was Dave, you brought this up last year. The amount of retirement, the, it, it's involved in the salary that um, is determined when her retirement gets determined. Right. The, the 5,000 is also included. But it's work she does on a regular basis. It's not a one-time project here and there. It's work throughout the year. Why they've chosen to do it that way, I'm not but I think because they're phasing out parts of Munis and they're adding in training for staff, which in, in the future may reduce this, the amount of time she has to spend doing that. And it's, because, and it's because she is a particular expert in Munis here? In, in, yeah. in Munis? Yes. Questions? Charlie? comment to Carolyn's remarks, and that is that uh, if they had to hire uh, a unit's representative to come in and train these people coming in and out of the town, the expenses
price would be a lot higher than five thousand right. dollars. Mm -hmm. It just just seems strange to me. Right. I mean, you, you you have a piece of software that presumably makes life better for everybody, or it makes things, etc. Every time I've experienced that, you know, people just did it somehow. But, but you get a, you get a, a new tool. You have to look tool upon, just, I mean, this this Unis is an enterprise yeah. accounting and management system. It's yeah. not it's not Excel. It's not like a tool. I mean, it's like well, well, it also works a little bit. I mean, the, my my own small comment from having looked at this in the past. Unis is a little different. Like so, if you I go to my company, okay? Um, we have an, our accounting system has, is, can be accessed by 10 people. All of them are in the accounting department. Nobody outside of accounting can touch it. That's usually standard in corporate America, right? In the public sector, when you have a public sector system, Munis is actually used by a lot of departments. So public works has access to Munis, blah, blah, blah. The fire department has access to it for billing and things like that. And so you're right. When you have like 10 people who have access to it and they all sit next to each other, it's very easy to administer it and everybody can sort of learn together. When one person is at the fire station and public safety and another person is at the school department and two people are here and the system is decentralized like that, that's like Charlie said where you don't have the knowledge here, and you don't have the people that understand it, and you're going to end up in these situations where you'd have to bring someone in from the outside to train it. That's sort of the, the difference. So they're going to be taking the easy way out, not the easy way, the cheaper way out, than having to hire someone to train it and just asking. I think all the department heads have access, and they actually input their budgets in the units. Correct. And then the manager's office downloads it uh, into Excel. Um, and then gives us this, and then we put it in our, uh, that's another issue. <laughs> okay, are there any other questions on the controller's budget? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. By the way, I'm assuming you're recommending it. Yes, I'm recommending it as is. <laughs> okay, so motion's been made and seconded for 422528 on the controller's budget, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 2614. Uh, I actually don't want to do IT because at the last minute, David took 10,000 out of one account to change a grade of somebody, which is actually a reclass, if I understand correctly. And that reclass doesn't appear in the reclass I picked up today from Karen. And I didn't think of that until this afternoon when I was looking over all four budgets. So I need to talk to both David and Karen about that particular grade change. Mm -hmm. um, we can do personnel without our human resources budget without doing reclass if you want. Sure. Okay. So human resources is page 33. Human resources. Page 33. 32. No, 231. 231, sorry. Oh, no, that's a reclass. I'm sorry. I was right the first time. 33. 33. 35 is the exact sheet. So here, the um, big thing you'll notice is all of a sudden there's $50,000 for training. Where did that come from? And that is, um, they're finding more and more administrators within the town who are um, being asked to use Office Excel or Office, um, particularly Excel, but some other types of computer systems don't have the skill set because their current job hasn't involved them using it. Um, and they test people when they have them move, have them apply for jobs, both external and internal candidates. And they're finding the skill sets are missing um, in certain places. And so they would like to set aside a training budget specifically
for, to upgrade people's skills around software use. And most of the people who would be gaining, gaining that training would be administrative and administrative technical staff. Um, so that's why there is that increase there. Would that be done by person, uh, human resources or would it, it be done by IT? It would be, they're putting in, hum, in, in human resources, David actually asked her to put it here because he felt it was more office work than it was actually IT work. Um, and so it's a training program that will run through human resources rather than through IT. Now does this al already include training for, for managers throughout the, is the yes. do they already do that on personnel issues? Right, so you'll see there's a $20,000 jump. So the, in the past that amount has been anywhere from around 25 to 30. So the difference is that extra 20,000 is what will be used for this particular training. Okay, questions, Charlie, and then John. Carolyn, where is the uh, offset that keeps her within three and a half percent? That's the whole manager has to do that. The offset, oh, very, well, the, hmm. Each, part, each of their budgets can go up or down, but the whole manager's recommendations has to be within the three and a half. I think that's within the budget off front. This is right. So then. I'll make a comment and you all disagree with me come down hard on me, but I have a, I get disturbed by <coughs> learning that people need money to do training for a job, if I can put it that way. I mean, I, okay. I've used software for 50 years and I've always learned it for myself, whatever the hell it was. I just, you know, put the effort in to learn how to do it. And I suspect that most everybody else here who's done software has done the same thing and I don't quite understand why it is that budgets have to include something like this for training. How many of us here have administrative jobs or have held administrative jobs for more than five years in our lives? None of us. No. We're talking about a very different group of people and their access to education and their access to other people within their very small sphere of life. Who, who know this stuff and can help them with it. So that's my, that's my response. Okay, all right. Well, I'll, yeah, so okay. it, I, I don't have such experience, you know, all, all the technical kind of things. Town Hall was an MIT. I'm sorry? Yeah. Town Hall was not MIT. Well, yeah. uh, you must have worked for a cheap company, John. <laughs> you know, but, 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 you know um, if you're a carpenter, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, you're hired by, uh, the DPW, there's not a line item here for training carpenters, for example. So, you know, someone who is supposed to come and do a job for you as an administrator should come with those skills, it would seem to me. Well, and the, and the or, new- or, or, you know, if you're a carpenter and you don't have the skill, you go out and learn how to use the tools. Right. And the new hires do have to have those, those skills. Uh -huh. And when someone, when an administrator applies for a job that, that requires them to pass a test and they don't pass the test, they don't get to apply for the job. Um, you know, they're, they're told, I'm sorry, but you need the skill set in order to do that. The problem is some of that office work then enters into their current job. Okay, I see. And, you know, and that has changed over time. Okay. Um, people are finding that they need to do more and more work. Okay. And so those are the people the money will I go see. towards. Okay. Does that make yeah. so yes. So they're that, not that they're makes sense. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are a lot of sympathy for people right. like that yeah. in that situation. John, there's also uh, an immense amount of 
many of these departments, there's an immense amount of regulatory compliance mm -hmm. that they have to deal with on a regular basis, and that requires training also. And it changes over time. Yeah. So somebody could be here for 20 years and um, you know, have to do things differently. And, and uh, you know, the, the school department and their uh, adaptation to these uh, common core standards and all that sort of thing are a good example of that. There are similar things on the town side. Any other questions? Okay, um, I assume you're recommending this printed? I'm recommending it printed. Okay, do I have a no, motion? Me a so moved. Second? Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of 298,084, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. 226. Okay. Any other budgets? I guess we can take five minutes off. Is there any other business? Nope. Motion to be adjourned.